Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Tech Tested. Do you wish your AMD CPU came with that fancy new Wraith cooler, but even if you could find it on shelves, you wouldn't want to spend the money for it? Well, we're going to teach you how to build a homemade Wraith. But first, let's start with a little bit of an explanation on stock and aftermarket CPU coolers. On your right, we have the stock AMD cooler for most of their 95 watt and lower TDP CPUs. In the middle here, we have what is considered a pretty good representation of a stock CPU cooler for AMD's 125 TDP CPUs. It has heat pipes and a very aggressive fan. Now, the biggest complaint with this CPU cooler is the fan noise. And on your left, we have a Cooler Master Hyper T4, which represents a lower to mid-range, but pretty well-performing aftermarket CPU cooler. The advantage of these two CPU coolers is they come with your processor. The advantage to the Cooler Master CPU cooler is its high performance and cooling, giving you a little bit of room to overclock. Now, what AMD has done recently is they have tried to address the problem with the noise on their more popular heat pipe CPU cooler. And what, the way they did that was basically they made the heat pipes a little bit bigger and added a much larger fan to it. When they do that, they can actually lower the RPM of the fan while achieving the same kind of airflow, representing very similar performance at a much lower noise. The problem with that is there's currently only one CPU that the Wraith cooler comes with, and that is the AMD FX8370. The other problem is you can't really buy them off the shelf right now. They're not available, but I still wanted one. I thought it was a really cool concept. So what I did was I made my own and here it is. Basically, all I did was I took a stock AMD CPU cooler and strapped a 92 millimeter fan to it. And I did some performance tests and here are the results. As you can see, our regular aluminum CPU cooler couldn't even keep our overclocked FX4130 at a reasonable temperature. And even our stock cooler was really struggling to keep it close to what AMD considers their max temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. But when you throw a 92 millimeter fan on your stock AMD CPU cooler with heat pipes, it does bring it down to a very reasonable temperature for an overclock. Obviously it doesn't perform as well as the Hyper T4, but hey, for just the addition of one 92 millimeter fan, that's pretty impressive gains. So what do you recommend, Matt? Well, if you have this aluminum cooler, throw it out and get something like a Hyper T4 or a Hyper 212 Evo. That is really gonna be the best bang for your buck as far as performance goes. But if you have this stock AMD CPU cooler, we're gonna teach you how to make this Ghetto Rig Wraith cooler. And you can actually get pretty good price to performance out of it when you consider that you can probably either just find a 92 millimeter fan from a friend or you can buy one for five to $10. And if you want to focus on silent computing, you could even go a little bit further and spend money on a much quieter fan as well. So the mod is pretty basic. You only need four things really. You first of all need your 92 millimeter fan, preferably if you can get it for a reasonable price, pulse width modulation, which has four pins. However, this one only has three and that's perfectly acceptable. You just need to manually set your fan speeds in your BIOS or in a program like SpeedFan. Um, next thing you need is a very thin screwdriver flathead, and I'll show you why in a minute, why it's very, the thin part is very important. Um, next, you're gonna want a pair of pliers. Um, this is for pulling on your zip ties to pull them through the fan. And last but not least, you're gonna want two to four zip ties, um, probably stick with four just to be safe. But yeah, that's all you need to make your Wraith CPU cooler. And here we go. Okay, so first things first is you need to get the old stock fan off. And that's why you need the thin screwdriver. So very simply what you do is you pick it up and basically it has two tabs on either side that are holding it on. You take the, CP, the screwdriver and stick it between some of the fins and pull up just so you get it off the clip part. And I'm having a little bit of trouble with this one. Last one went pretty smooth. There we go. And then you do that with the one adjacent to it, hopefully without knocking the other one down. I think from there you can just off. Oh, I think I got it. There you go. Might have to pry it off the other side as well. Same thing. There's that one. And then that one. All right, there's your stock cooler. Now you need to take your 92 millimeter fan. You want to orient it to where the fan is going to be close to your header. 
but because I don't really know where the header would be on a particular motherboard that I'm putting it on, this is how it's gonna set on there. Um, keep in mind, you may want to attach the CPU cooler to the motherboard first, depending on how easy it's gonna be for you to get to the clip. Actually, now that I think about it, you probably wanna put it so that the fan's not interfering with the hold down clip. Um, but you take a zip tie, actually this one's going easier than my last one. You run it through like so, take another zip tie and do the same thing. They come through easily, you may not need the pliers. On my first one, I had a lot of trouble getting the zip ties through the holes, but this one's going much simpler. So the next thing you do is you want to set your fan on your CPU cooler. Then you want to thread the zip ties back through the other side. I'll show you in a second the way you do this and why. Actually, now I think about it, if I recall correctly, I did this first. So you feed them through. You want to get these outside so you'll be able to cut them as needed. Then you basically just wrap it around the CPU. Then need to pull zip ties tight with your fan sitting on there. And depending on the way your CPU cooler is going, you may want to put it either on the inside or the outside of the heat pipes. I'm gonna see how it works with it on the outside. That's the way it worked better on my other one. We're actually going to pull these out, run it through here. By the way, if any of you guys come up with a better way of doing this, be my guest to share it with us. But this is how I figured out how to do it. Here we go. Ah, it's starting to come together a little bit. All right, now we need to pull the zip ties through. It's starting to come together. We gotta address this side. And I'll try to do it from this angle so you guys get a little bit better idea of what I'm actually doing. Um, just pulling this through. All right. And I believe it's basically it. Let's see if I can cut these zip ties without cutting any fan wires. Now you do want to leave a little bit of slack here on these corners just in case the fan is not tight around the zip tie like it was for me and you need to put other zip tie ends on there. So you basically would cut the zip tie right here and then just slide the end on there to help hold the fan down. You're going to want to cut the end off the zip tie like that and then take this, slide it on. can actually cut the excess off. And there you go. That's that's another way to help hold your fan down. Um, I'll do it with the other one. And here's your final product. This is what a homemade Wraith CPU cooler looks like, and hopefully you can get about five to 10 degrees Celsius performance gains out of it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and leave a comment if there's anything you'd like us to cover in the future. Again, thanks for watching. And Josh and I have been talking a lot about our video format, and we wanted to know from you guys if you'd like us to go into more in depth about the components we use and the testing we do. As you've noticed, we've been basically keeping our videos, trying to keep it as concise as possible while giving you as much information as you need. But some people like a little bit more detail, so make sure to leave us a comment on Facebook, uh, send us a tweet, leave a comment on the video, or email us if that's something you'd like to see in the future.